Welcome to Land Academy. This is the cash flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy unwanted vacant land and sell it for more on the internet. I'm Steve Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We, we are, are your hosts. hosts. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we are the experts in this niche land flipping business. We hold a drawing to win a free property every month. Enter to win by reviewing this show on iTunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com. All right, let's get this show started. Stephen Jack Butella here for Land Academy. Welcome to our cash flow from Land Show, where we show you how to buy property for half and resell it the next day, the very next day. Great information and instruction from Jack, that's me. And inspiration from Jill, that's me. In this episode, Jack. <laughs> In this episode, Jill and I talk about how to sell property online, episode one of five. So tons of our members and other people are asking us to do a series on how to sell property, not just buy it. This is episode one of five. Get the social media ball rolling. Jill, great show today. Before Mm -hmm. we start, uh, we'll take a question from a caller uh, or from a, uh, a member like we always do on our uh, free community, successplant.com. Today, I'm going to read the question. Question from Hobart. Uh, Didn't tell us where he's from, but here's the situation. I have a guy who responded to one of my Craigslist ads a few months ago, and he rejected my offer. But he came back, and he really wants to unload the property. It's two adjacent properties in Lima, Ohio, and they're just under a half acre each. And then he gives us actual links to the property, which tells me he is really on his way to put in his first deal together. The owner said something about there being a slope on the properties and needing to work with engineers to build it, which scares me a little bit. The slope isn't apparent from Google Maps. Boy, this guy's doing everything right. And uh, although the parcels are heavily wooded, they have uh, houses on either side of them and a lake over next to the street. It looks like, uh, you know, it looks like it's a very good area to invest in. So, he checked it out and it said, uh, looking on Landwatch, there are 10 or so vacant lots listed for $14,000 each in the Lima, Ohio area. And one thing I'm concerned about is the fact that the owner obtained the properties at a tax deed sale, which is the real question I think here, Joe. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it okay to buy property at a tax or buy property from somebody who purchased it uh, at a tax deed sale? So, and here's my answer. Man, my hat is off to you for uh, doing all the research and really being a well, asking a well-informed question. You know, I, I was going to read this question and right before we started the show and Jill said, oh my gosh, this is such a crazy long question. Are you serious? Right. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I chose it for a reason. Um, Hobart, you're doing everything right and I'm, real, I'm proud of you. You're, you're right on your way to doing your first deal. Uh, And no, I wouldn't be too concerned about buying property at a tax deed sale at all, as long as you do your homework, just like you've done all the way up till now. So can you go get title insurance on it? Yeah. In fact, the longer he's owned it, the easier it's going to be. People do this all the time. They buy properties at a tax sale and they either do a quiet title action or a tax uh, or um, get title insurance after the fact. Is it super simple, just like buying a house like we always do? No, but it's very easily something easy. It's something that you can work through very easily. So uh, I would not be afraid of the tax deed piece at all. The engineering piece, however, on these properties, you know, I, Jill and I always say this on your first two or three deals, or let's say five, make it easy on yourself. Choose a property that has no issues whatsoever, no concerns. You know, the type of property where you run into the bank saying, man, I hope the seller doesn't change his mind. So while I think this on the onset is something maybe I would take on because I've done uh, almost 16,000 deals now, I'm not so sure this is the best first deal for you. You kind of want a slam dunk. So send a huge mailer out and uh, you know choose from the, all the offers that come back and, and make it easy on yourself. Don't you think, Joe? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Do you have anything else on this that, that really kind of trips your, uh, your acquisition? You're in the front line. Your staff is on the front lines more than me these days. I know. No, and I, I agree with you. When you're starting out, if you've got three things, it sounds like, going on here that you really want to make sure that you do them right, that, I mean, the chances of goofing up something are higher than if you had some really, really easy ones as you get rolling. And then and keep working on this one on the side, too, by the way. Yeah. Um, that's that's one of the things that we talk about. I, I, um, I talked to someone the other day. We were talking about 
you know, what if I just, you know, target, you know, $50,000 properties and sell them for $100,000, you know, kind of thing. I'm like, well, okay, let's think about this. You're gonna do a lot less of those and there might be more things to think about and then doing $50,000 deals, you know, kind of thing and doubling your money. You're gonna get there. You're gonna get to the same end. Why don't we make it easier on ourselves? Yeah, I mean, people <laughs> people use our data to do that all the time. Uh-huh. So yeah. It's I mean, possible. But, but they're not super new. Right. You know, they've done some inexpensive rural land deals, you know, a lot of them before that. So Jill and I do deals like that all the time. We send out offers on houses in a larger acreage property and spend 50 and make, you know, and bring in 80. Mm-hmm. So the answer is heck yes. Or just even on a smaller scale, it's very realistic to make five to $10,000 on a transaction that you do right. So just do a couple of those instead of wait for that one big, big, yeah. big one that you're going to, you're going to spend a lot more time on. Right. You could be doing, you know, and that's what you and I come back to sometimes. Like when we did some of the flipping that we did and when we sat down and really looked at the numbers and looked at the time and the energy and who all was involved and everything, we realized, gosh, we could have made so much more money and made it easier on ourselves doing multiple smaller deals. Exactly. Um, well said. And then if one, one little deal, maybe something, something didn't, didn't work out right or whatever, big deal though. You know, the wheels aren't falling off the bus. It's a one little thing. Right. And, and the 49 others <laughs> make up for the one, you know, especially when you're new. So. Yeah. The whole idea is to get the machine rolling and mm-hmm. not really concentrate on any one single deal too much. Mm-hmm. So this, uh, I incidentally, I lived in this part of the country for a while and there's some really cool creative things that you can do with lots like this to make them really valuable. Uh, you know, long story short, you got to build a house on stilts kind of thing. And it's not uncommon. I mean, for, for some of us who live in other areas that you're kind of saying what, Right. but it's really not, um, not an uncommon thing at all. Hey, if you have a question or you want to be on the show, call 800-725-8816. So the topic today is sales episode one of five. Let's get the social media ball rolling. Boy, I really wish somebody would have told me this a lot of years before I caught on. You know, I'm these, if you're a younger and you're listening to this, you have a huge edge over some of us who are a little bit older. This whole social media thing, you were born with it or you, or you got in tune with it when you were younger and you have a huge advantage. Can so. I can I just make sure you're not talking about me? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Age well, you it. said you said a little bit of those of us. I'm like, d- d- which group am I in, just, Stephen? Uh, I just want to clarify here. Julie, I hope I'm in the cool, the clear, the the cool group. Jill, you are the age that you feel like on the inside. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, I have to admit, by the way, as far as as far as um, how do I? without throwing myself under the bus, I think I'm pretty good as compared to a lot of people as far as social media and things like oh, that. Oh, I think so. we both are. Okay, thank and you. And it didn't happen by accident. You know, we had to, we learned. Totally. Like way the hell after college learned. Steven, I use Snapchat. <laughs> Do you use Snapchat? I have used it. All right, just checking. <laughs> I had somebody to Snapchat with. Uh, I would do, use it more maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> if I had a reason to delete everything that I kind of, my parents were looking at my phone, I would use it. Uh, <laughs> love it. oh okay got it <laughs> okay thank you so the meat of the show is this sales 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 how do i get this uh this whole series was a, a result of people requesting that we do it jill uh, our members and then other people are saying you guys talk about acquisitions and buying stuff cheap all the time you show us how to do it you provide the tools but what about sales i sure i'd get involved but i don't know how to sell this stuff so Let's start with step one, get the social media ball rolling. So here's my saying in my mantra, good acquisitions solve all sales problems or all sales issues or concerns. But no matter what, you still have to have a super strong web presence mm-hmm. and there's just no replacing placing it and it doesn't happen overnight. However, it doesn't have to be hard either. You got to create a website. Or get one created. Doesn't uh, take too much money or time. Make sure it's got email addresses. You know, can't use an email account. I mean, you could when you're starting out, but you want to have this in the back of your head. You want to make sure that you're going to have a phone number that you're going to use for a very, very long time. 
Uh, same with the uh, mailing address. I'm suggesting that it's not your house or apartment and that your phone number is not your cell phone. And then uh, you want to make sure you have a Facebook, Twitter, uh, Facebook and a Twitter account at the very least. There's a few other accounts that I'm going to suggest in a few minutes here. But essentially, that's it. It's not that really, really that hard. You, like any other business that you would create or any other type of web presence, you have to start, you know, with the website. And I would suggest not only your your business, but your name. You know, do build them both up at the same time. Because who knows, you might go off and do some other business and you want to, and, you know, and, but it's your name. You want to keep all these customers, these people that know you. And then B, people want to get to know you. It's not just your business. You know, we, we kind of joke about that and laugh about, you know, what it used to be. We talked to somebody the other day about Mm it. You know, we used to, you know, and he came from that too. He had like a um, data company. Didn't he? No, IT, no. it was an IT, IT company. company. Yeah. That's what it was. You know, and he was like, you know, back when he started, he like no one really cared to know who I was. It was all about my company, which was true. Now it's not that it's not that way. They want to know you too. Yeah. So. so if you've noticed in some of the on television commercials right now, some very large companies like let's say Toyota and uh, some insurance companies and AT and T. So in, for years and years and years, it, the the regular. Uh, the conventional knowledge for any size company was to say, all right, well, we're Toyota and that's it. They brand that name. Now, uh, this younger generation and the, and the people who are up and coming and have a ton of money to spend, disposable income, they want to, they want to see a face to that company. So if you'll notice that Progressive Insurance and Toyota and AT&T on TV, they all have the face of, of a young woman who's kind of becoming the face or is the face now of that company. Like Flo. Like Flo. Like, uh, I don't know the other names of the, the I don't know the other girls' names. I know that there's a Toyota one where you hear her name, and the other girl, I don't, I don't know if we hear her name, the, the it, it's AT&T eerie. or something. It's eerie how much they look similar, too. It's true. So I'm sure that didn't happen by accident. But you want to brand your name and your face and yourself way more than some uh, company name. And it took me, again, a long time to get used to that, but that's really the, the conventional way to do this now. So it's all part of getting the social media ball rolling. So what ends up happening with a lot of our members is that they uh, say, well, that's great, Steve. Great. I want to do a real estate deal though. So I'm going to skip this. I'm going to put it on the back burner. And then they all come back one by one, a couple of months later and say, man, you were right. I really should have gotten that done because I sent two mailers out and now I'm doing real estate deals and I got to go backwards. I got to start this whole thing and it takes a long time. And, uh, you know, so trust me when I say, you really need to get this thing rolling, uh, even if you just spend a, one weekend on it, getting the site up. Um, it's not real hard to find somebody to do, to, to do a website for you pretty inexpensively. And make sure you got, you're got you going to use on that first mailer, you send out the same phone number, the uh, mailing address, and you're ready when parcels start coming in to have some type of Facebook and Twitter account so you can kind of tell everybody what's going on on the internet with, uh, with these properties that you're buying or trying to buy. You know, when I'm coaching our, some of our members too, and they're asking questions about the process and, you know, talking about where to post properties and all the different things that we're talking about. Um, I, you know, one of the things I ask is, do you have a website? And if you say no, that's, that might be holding you back. You, you may What's not know it. There, Jill? I mean, how many, you ask a lot of people that question, how many say yes and no? I don't, you know, the majority do say yes. How about oh, this? Good. Okay. You know, the majority do say yes. And I can clearly tell the the people, especially in success plan, I can I can absolutely pick out the very successful people, and there's a really common denominator. They have all done A, B, C, D, E, just like you and I had said. Well said. Thank you. So and so that's what's great when I when I talk to people who are thinking about this, they're like, oh, God, you know, asking some questions. They're like, look, here's the deal. We're going to tell you A, B, C, D, E. If you do A, B, C, D, E in that order, you will be just fine. And 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 it shows. Excellent. So thank you. Don't skip one. <laughs> Don't skip social media. <laughs> yeah. So. A lot of you already have it going. Mm-hmm. Exactly. This is the if-then segment of our show. If you do X, then Y will happen. If you want to sell properties efficiently, then post them on the internet in at least six places and email your A-list. That's the topic of uh, episode two, so we're not going to go into it in too much now uh, detail now. But if you want to sell properties efficiently, 
then post them on the internet in at least six places. What are those six places? Oh, geez. Let's say it again, Jill. Website. Facebook, Twitter, Landwatch, Land and Farm, Postlets, which helps you post uh, Trulio and Zillow. And then finally, and most importantly, send a direct email about these properties that you're buying to a, bi- a list that you're building. And we'll cover mm-hmm. that in the next episode. Exactly. Hey, if you have a question or you want to be on the show, call 800-725-8816. Jill, do you have some inspiration for us today? I always do. Because that's me. Just kidding. You're a ball of inspiration. Thank you. Okay, so uh, this came from a conversation I had with my girlfriend the other day, and I thought it was really, really cool. She was talking about what keeps her going and what keeps her motivated on a day-to-day basis. So, and for her, it's she ha- it's so great because she um, she has to take. It was funny. She says I have to take two trips a month, then I'm happy. That's what keeps oh, her motivated. Really? Like business thought, trips or just any trips? Any trips. So it was so funny because oh. she was here visiting you and so this I. This is brilliant. I know, and I, I thought, love this part of the show. Thought this is really interesting because, and she realized that when I reached out to her um, to get her to come out and, and spend a couple days at the beach with us. She said, oh my gosh, Jill, thank you so much. It came at just the right time. I realized I had not been on an airplane in six weeks. And for her, <laughs> that was a lot. She said, I took a step back and I realized I have to do two trips a month, whatever it's personal or or business, you know, it doesn't matter. So my inspiration and my my question to you is what what motivates you on a daily basis to you know, get you getting up in the morning and, and, and why you do, you know what you do. Do you yeah. know? I. You mean for me personally? Yeah. What are yours, Stephen? I mean, you got me really thinking because that's such a great topic. I, Cause I, you know, the big picture piece of this is you can have all the information and instruction and tools. Cause that's kind of my piece. I'm the more technical person about, you know, here, this is how you do it. Here's the education piece and here's the tools. But if you don't, if you're not inspired, you know, and I don't mean like inspired one time, I mean, it's constantly and consistently inspired or motivated to get it done, to reach that end goal. It's not going to happen. So, or you're dramatically reducing the chance of it happening. So, you know, I am very, very motivated by two, two things. Um, I'm motivated, motivated by the, by the uh, prospect of, of profit of money. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, I'm extremely motivated and I just, I get all jacked up and happy about buying stuff that's under value, mm-hmm. getting a good deal, you know, so that. I mean, it's kind of the thrill, the thrill of the chase every morning. It's like, man, what can we buy that's free for half today Got and, and make some, make a ton of money. Thank you for being honest. Cause that's really true about you. <laughs> Mine are so different. I know. And it's, that's why we're partners. Yeah. What are they? Mine are, um, I love variety. Motivates me every day is waking up and kind of not knowing what the day is going to bring. I know it drives you crazy. You want consistency. I love the variety. You know, I really, I really enjoy that. And I love big projects. I love the thought of where we're going with X and all the steps it's going to take to get to that point, mm-hmm. like writing a book. I like the thought of a book and on the bookshelf, but man, there's a lot of things that go into it. And I kind of like the sitting down, dissecting it and, and you know, and planning it out yeah. and, and having that to look forward to having that big end goal to look forward to. Right. So, hey, can I make a perception? Sure. I, uh, all day long, I hear you communicating with people and, uh, well, not typically we are in our own offices right now. We're on an extended California on the beach situation, but so we're working in the same room right now and mm-hmm. all day long, I hear you, um, communicating with people in different ways, whether it's email on the phone or, or whatever, and all different, some are brand new. Some are, are have been with us for, as members for a long time. And I can tell the difference between when you're really getting through to somebody and when it's maybe not so much. And I think that when you're done and you got through to somebody and you actually helped them, forget about the money. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think that that keeps you very inspired by helping people. I am. That's true. Thank you. So I, I mean, it's just my perception. That's a great perception. And it's true. Thank you, Stephen. Yep. Jack. <laughs> What's your name? Just kidding. My middle name's Jack, and I everybody know. loves Jack and Jill, so we're making that transition, and thank you, uh, listeners, for your patience. Exactly. I'm, I don't really know. People are calling me all kinds of different stuff in my uh, personal and professional life, so 
If you think you're confused. Ha! <laughs> Just go with, hey, you. That's what I do sometimes. <laughs> hey, join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information, that's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want, we use it every day to buy property for half and sell it for more almost immediately. Immediately. Good show, Joe. It is. So tell me about your perception because I want to know your your uh, your, your oh. observation. When, what do I do? Like, is it is it physically that you see me that I'm, I'm, you know, when, when people don't get it or they do get it, what, what's, what's the trigger? How do you know? So I'm going to give you two direct examples. I'm not going to name any names, but they're two recent, uh, recent, uh, uh, conversations or connections that you've had. Okay. One is about a week ago or less than maybe five days ago. You had a, 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 t- a talk on the phone with somebody who just was not ready, uh, in any way to participate in purchasing real estate. And I mm-hmm. could tell right from the get go. And you didn't show any frustration or anything like that, but you just did weren't you weren't getting through to that person. I don't and they weren't it's not your fault or their fault. They just were not ready. It's kind of like uh teaching algebra to a third grader. You know, there's just there's a lot of steps that have to go on before that. And um you're extremely good at bring at meeting these people from where they come, communicating to them that way. Okay. And uh but sometimes they just don't hear it. And, Got it. You know, it's not you or them. They're just not ready. Got it. So that, and I could tell it was, you just, it was frustrating for you. I'm not saying you weren't helpful. And I think that you did in the end, I think that person got steered in the right direction. You know, and I think a lot of people, Jill, would have sold them something or said, you know, you just, but you didn't do that. Oh, I yeah, think no. your heart was totally in the right place. And you said, you know, you're not ready. And, That's and uh, please go do this, 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 and this you know, completely outside of uh, the family of companies here. Completely mm-hmm. go do this and see if this is really what you want to do. Yeah, the last, that's a lot. Thank you, Stephen. That's the last thing I want. I don't want somebody jumping into this when it's really not the right thing for them or they really don't understand, you know, how this works and all that. That's, I don't want to, I'm not, not here to create a mess for anybody. The flip side of that <laughs> is in the, the positive side. The other side of the coin is that I, I just uh, overheard you speaking with, or, or communicating about, I think you're talking to somebody else about this. You weren't speaking directly with the person, but there's a person who purchased our, our uh, one of our education programs and they did not, they were not ready to, and that's fine, get involved with uh, buying the tools to send out mailers and, and do the uh, direct mail piece, the data to doorstep piece of this. Mm-hmm. And what was holding this person back was a, a, a concern for the technical skill that they had for using Excel specifically. And I think you got that person through that incredibly well. And I think that that person was ready to, you know, you provided the tools for them, mm-hmm. again, outside of our company or family of companies to get the basic Excel skills. Not that you need it, but for whatever reason, everybody's got a, a thing, you mm-hmm. know. Everybody's got a little thing in the back of their head saying, oh, man, you know, if I only just had this, then I could do it. Mm-hmm. So for whatever reason, Excel was this person's thing. You know, well, I, it's I had not, a bunch of things when I started, too. Well, yeah, and this actually, um, this was not just one person. There were a couple people that were asking very similar questions that I was addressing. And um, I was trying to help them all at the same time. So it's it's all it's all good. Right, right, exactly. So yeah, and you know what? The biggest thing is, God, thank you for asking. I don't care what it is. You know, that's the thing about you and I. We are really here to help. We all we want we want to succeed and and how we succeed is all of our people succeeding. Right. So I and I'm I will n- never I don't want anyone to ever think a question's dumb or small or, you know, whatever. If it's a question, it's a concern, whatever, it's valid. And most of the time, people don't even realize you're not alone. You're like, really? Other people have asked this? Heck yeah. You're, I mean, that's you're, why we started Success Plants. So yeah. You can go in there and see and see the questions that people ask. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I can almost guarantee now, this site's been up for a while. There's a lot of people in there mm-hmm. asking questions that are going to be very similar to yours. Well, here's a beautiful example. You and I spent over six months writing, recording, putting together our whole thing. Mm-hmm. Over six months to come out with 14 hours of information. And we tried our best to skunk, think about every possible question, scenario. We gave working examples, recordings, you know, all kinds of stuff. But there's always going to be something. 
somebody's going to pick up on a little something or maybe they just learn a different way or that something doesn't make sense. And so, you know, that's, that's like you just said, where success yeah. plan came in. Now we're like, Oh, okay. All right. We can help you with that. And some people got it. Some people learn different and we're all here together. I constantly adjust how I, uh, how we address people's questions constantly. Uh, and it'll never end mm-hmm. based on the feedback that I get. We did, I did a consulted call yesterday or two days ago and we were talking to some extremely bright people that they didn't understand this one tiny little part. It's not that they didn't understand it. I just don't think they thought about it that way. Mm-hmm. And we, I learned from them. They learned from me. And, and now in the future, I, I take a couple steps back before we even get into that topic. Mm-hmm. So I think that's what it takes. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's go buy something for half price today and resell it. Jack and Jill information and inspiration we hold a drawing to win a free property every month enter to win by reviewing this show on itunes and downloading our free ebook at landacademy.com if you want to get involved or you need more information about our profitable niche real estate operation call 480-467-0359 you just might get jill at the other end of the line landacademy.com You are not alone in your real estate ambition.